Thank you for joining us. Sorry about that little hiccup. It suddenly froze, so I thought it was best to start again. This is part of a probably 50-minute talk I do, so it has necessarily been abbreviated. So without any further ado, we'll get on. You're thinking, what's that got to do with flying? That was the first airship that ever landed in the vicinity of Leamington Spa. On May the 17th, 1911, a man who made airships for, and called them after a name called Viola was called Mr. Willows and called this Willows number four, I think, decided to make an attempt to fly from Wolverhampton to London by airship. He was followed by cars driven by his wife and two brothers called Denison. He got as far as Cranford at Blackdown Crossroads where he'd arranged to have a leisurely stop to have a two hour breakfast. That was the home of Mr. Dennison, the father of the two sons. The people of Leamington soon found out that this Willows airship had landed there and everybody was flocking out into town to see it. Well, when they found out it was taken off, the Campion Hill suddenly were deluged for people to watch it fly over Leamington. So eventually it took off and the people of Leamington were watching the airship fly across our town. And it added to the people's own best town, which which was a village then, and he was forced to land on Whitnash County Golf Club because the balloon that was keeping it in the air started to spring a leak. The Leamington Courier rushed out there with the mayor of Leamington who wanted to have his picture taken to have a look at this. And there's pictures in the Leamington Courier in 1911 showing them all having lunch in the golf club. Unfortunately, they couldn't repair it. So a lorry was brought over. It was all deflating and... Uh, deflated and tanked to pieces and tanked back to Wolverhampton. But that was quite an unusual start of a form of flying in Leamington Spa. The Cranford estate is right on the edge of Leamington. It's really black down, but I thought I could pass the barriers. If anybody's interested, the Cranford estate, where this took place now, on the corner there, is on the market for £5.5 .5 million. Pounds. So if you fancy a nice little country retreat, go. The first flying display in Leamington took place on what they call the Shrubman Hall Estate. This is where the massive council estate was built later in the 1930s, bordering onto the back of the canal and bordering Catsbrook Road. They had a visit from a flyer called BC Hooks, and it occurred on the 3rd of July 1913. The air display was sponsored by Midland Autocar. Mr. Hutch's plane was a tandem Blario military type and it was worth £1,150, which was a lot of money there. It was housed in the last tent during his stay and he then did a demonstration flight at 3,000 feet and carried out an extensive tour of the area. He was asked if he would be able to carry out all his demonstration flights and replied, yes, subject to the weather. He would, however, cancel the bomb dropping which had proved difficult at previous displays. It was difficult to get the bombs away from the aeroplane, which I thought was good. There was tea tents and refreshment rooms around. The Warwickshire Yeomanry Band gave programmes of light music. One local lady, Miss Agnes Bright, enjoyed her flight on the Friday so much that she came again on the Sunday with a warmer coat in the hope of taking another flight, but this did not occur. That's the aeroplane they were flying around in. Not quite the luxury you go flying off to the depths of Eastern Europe in these days. The next one I found out about a flying display is just outside our boundary, and it's in the field along by the River Avon in Barford, which is uh, an old time girl. On the 18th of September 1936, CWA's Flying Circus took place on the meadow there alongside the River Avon. The 12 aircraft arrived from the Lemington Whitnash area. It included wing walking, and in the old Leamington Courier, I found that picture. And you can just about make the, uh, the shape of the guy doing the wing walking. And the flying really was in its embryo days then. But uh, anybody fancy doing wing walking, I asked myself. Ah, oh, we have to have a witness representation. And um, I found details of it. I'm really not doing them in day tour. I'm going around the area in some sort of order. This took place in a field off the Whitnash Road in Whitnash, 
which is now the Ace of Coast playing field and Palmer Road houses built on it. The field was also part of now county, the Whitmash County Junior Store. The display was advertised as County Flying as taking place between 15th and 21st of September 1932. Two pilots, Red Mackay and Fruity H, and a wig walker called Frank Kemp. Their plans were XRAF Avro 504 machines. Administration to the event in today's money was adults 2.5p, children 1p, and car parking 2.5p. For the more adventurous, joyriding was available at 15p during the week and 20p at weekends. All of you, of course, know where the Sydenham estate is these days. Well, there was a polo ground up behind Sydenham Farm bordering the London Northwestern Railway. And that eventually became also uh, a fine display took place there many years later. And it was, uh, people flocked to it. The polo ground was used for lots of things, but I haven't got a lot of details of the uh, Right there, but I did know it was on the polo ground. The polo ground was also used in previous times for Buffalo Bill Circus. Anyway, we come to what uh, was described as Covington. If you know the Covington Road, uh, joining where the new free church is, is the playing field, and further on, look towards the waterworks, that was the scene of a great big flying display organised by Sir Alan Cobham. Alan Cobham, after the First World War and Pride took place with the uh, war at the time, became a great advocate of flying in Great Britain. And he went all over the country trying to persuade people to open municipal airports. One of the things he tried to do was to get Warwick and Leamington to build their own international airports in the 1930s. The, luckily, it never, never happened because it was getting close to something that happened in 1939. But an interesting air display took place here. And it took place on National Aviation Day on the 15th of July, 1932. Major Bonningson, more of him later, had a, who had an airfield out near Whitner, took 43 plane passengers on a flight from this site, giving them a view around Leamington. It was also visited by the mayor and mayoress of Leamington. And eventually, the mayor and mayoress of Leamington took Sir Alan and all his entourage to the Regent Hotel for a civic dinner. I think it was all part of the pitch of Alan Cobham wanting to Leamington Borough Council at the time to actually build an airfield. But uh, there's some interesting little stories attended to this. Um, Major Bonnetson took the Reverend J.A. Murray for a flight. J.A. Murray was part of the Sun Clearance Company in Leamington. He was also the vicar that unseated a Tory councillor in a by-election in North Leamington. And he thought his flight was a bit tame and so took another flight to, in the loop the loop next day. Also, Miss the, the <coughs> Carnival Queen, Miss Sissy Woodward and her attendants got a free flight. And lo and behold, what did I find in the courier? Shalom and Lady Common giving Leamington girls a treat. And this is Leamington's Carnival Queen, Miss Sissy Woodward and her attendants, lining up for their free flight. Oh, good price for Beauty Queen, I should think. I've got a list of all their names somewhere, but quite good. When they went to do their civic dinner, loads of Austin cars were laid on to take them there. But that's... New Covington, and of course, the all, all built up their houses and playing field still there, which is good. And you got the brand new church. You're going to say, Where's that? That's off church, Burnt Heath Farm, owned by Henry Johnson, who eventually owned Off Church Berry. And he decided he wanted an airstrip. And so, this field here, he had it converted so you could do flying from it. Quite an interesting little thing. Can find no records of ever any flights ever happening from there. But it's another little connection. I think there's something called a big railway line going quite close to it at the moment. The same, where's that? 
well, we couldn't do a talk on flying in Leamington without talking about Bonnetson's Aerodrome, or as he called it, he wanted it to be called an air park. It was an area of land which was really known as Bungalow Hill Farm on the Hardwick Lane, heading out of the Whitmash direction towards the Postway, uh, just before you get to the Leamington football ground up there now. He wanted to be Leamington's first air land, and he was anxious that he could set something and get people flying. It cost him £15,000 to set up, 62 acres of land, and with the aid of one employee, he managed to develop the airfield, which opened in 1932. He took the first paying passenger to Germany and constructed lock-up buildings to keep his gypsy mop in with wing folded. He provided one of the two daily services to the British Industrial Fair. He provided one of the only two daily services to the British Industrial Fair at Castle Bromish in February, March 1933. In 1933, he made a plan application to build two hangars in a bungalow which was approved, and by September, his family had moved into the bungalow. He became, there was a little problem with some ancient ties attached to one of the fields that cost him some money, and he had to go to court to fight it. While he sat there, he set up the Leamington District Flying Club, which was established by him in 1934 on the airfield. More lock-ups and petrol pumps, very topical, were set up. Various air shows were held at the airfield, with the last one taking place in May 1938. On the outbreak of war, the airfield was requisitioned and he had to vacate the premises and his bungalow to to rented accommodation. The Bellman hang two Bellman hangars were built there for the use of the Whitley Aircraft Company of Coventry and a company called SS Cars. And the purpose was they were going to... Sorry. We got, we got somebody else wants to join the room and somebody else to join it. So I just had two people join the room. And it was used occasionally as an emergency landing ground for the airplanes coming back from fighting in Europe. But SS cars later became Jaguar and they were up there repairing Whitley bombers. And there is a photo around showing the last Whitley bomber prepared there. But the reason I really got into this, there was a lady in Leamington called Joan Parsons. Joan Alice and Helen Mary Parsons. She lived with her father in Avenue Road and she inherited some money and had this idea of learning to fly, which of course everybody would have wanted to learn to fly in those days. Major Bonnetson taught her to fly and she started flying short distances. One day she told her mother, she was and her father, she was going to fly down to see some friends in Reading. And then they started wondering why they'd heard nothing from her. Well, umpteen weeks later, there was a great news headline going around the world was that Joan Alice Helen Mary Parsons had crash landed outside Cape Town. In the meantime, she'd actually flown across Europe, across the Mediterranean, down the east side of Africa, heading to Cape Town. And she landed 10 hours outside Cape Town. And if, there's a great list, which is too many to do on this short talk, all the countries she flew, flew over. And if you look at the African ones, she was in Egypt, Sudan, Somalia, everything. And she was going over all the danger spots. But her plane crashed. So a damaged plane was loaded into a railway truck. And she did the last trip to Cape Town using the train. When it got to Cape Town, the plane was rebuilt. And some weeks later, she flew all the way back to Leamington Spa. Again, across the east of Africa, Mediterranean, across Europe. And she was going to have a civic reception at the airdrome when she arrived. But of course, the day she was supposed to arrive, we had a massive rainstorm, so she couldn't get it at State Reading and she missed out. But she did get back. And it was quite a feat to fly single-handed in those days from Leamington to the tip of South Africa. She even got a little advert in the Leamington Courier saying the way she subsisted by flying up in the air and having no other sort of thing was to eat Leamington Spa water coffee. And she was a good at public. She got interviewed on the yeah, There's a, uh, a records of her being talked and interviewed on the present version of the BBC in those days, telling all about the air show and what she did and where she won. 
And then it went very quiet. She was a music teacher, really, but she obviously had a great adventure. But during the war, she came into the news again because she was told to go and work in a factory. And she went to work in a factory in the local area and she refused to go back because she said a man was annoying her and uh, assaulting her. And she got taken to court for not going to work. And it turned out the guy had been tickling her and she took offence. And she got fined five pounds and told to go back to work. After the war, she was still doing music lessons for a couple of years and then she disappeared. And finally, I managed to find trace of her and she actually retired to set a Western supermare where she sadly died in about 1969. And that's really my shortened version of my talk on flying in Minnesota.